What is up, ladies and gentle nerds? It's your boy Graham, also known as HamHawks42 on the internet, and today we're doing a little bit of a deck tech. I'm going to be looking through a deck that I built during the Zendikar pre-release and also take, well, roll it out into standard now and see how she fares. And so we're going to go into that. We're going to break down exactly what it is I was planning on doing, how it works, and then from there we're going to see it in action. So let's go ahead and get on started. Get on started? Sure, why not? Let's get on started. All right, so here's the deck. I'm calling this Scoot Fall because the main driver around it is Scoot Swarm. At the end of the day, that is the card that is really going to pop off and really create some obnoxiousness on our opponent's part. Now, we also do have Ruin Crab in here as kind of a plan B. At the end of the day, both are going to be very powerful. What this card, what this deck is today, we took a look at basically all of the really powerful landfall options in green and blue, and we slapped them together with a with a couple of ways to get extra lands into into play with Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, just because it's the single most powerful card in existence at the moment, and so it'd be a shame if we didn't use it. Um, or it is a shame that we are using it, but until they ban it, you know, we kind of just got to. Um, which, for the record, I do believe they are going to ban this card. If this cycles out naturally next year, I will be shocked and I will gladly eat those words. Um, I do believe we're, we're going to see an Uro ban, but until then, we might as well just run it. Um, we also have Migratory Greathorn because it does put additional lands into the battlefield. Now, we're only running three of them because we don't, it's not part of our win con. However, that does also give us an interesting interaction between Migratory Greathorn and Scoot Swarm because Scoot Swarm, if you have six or more lands, it creates a a copy of Scoot Swarm. Now, if you have mutated Migratory Greathorn on top of Scoot Swarm, instead of getting a 1 1, you're actually, you create copies of three fours. So you actually create copies of Migratory Greathorn if it's on top of a Scoot. So that's interesting and fun. And that just feeds on itself in a very beautiful way. We also have Glass Pool Mimic as a way of doubling down on the Scoots or Lotus Cobra or Ruin Crab. Whichever whichever piece we need, um, it has the opportunity to become a second one and so that we can we can really lean into it. Or worst case scenario, it's also a land, so that's an option too. And then we have Lotus Cobra in here because Lotus Cobra is possibly the single strongest landfall card ever. It doesn't look like much on the surface, but holy cow, when it gets going, it can allow your turn three to operate like your turn six. It's nuts how many lands can really come into play with a lo or how much mana you get to spend when you have a Lotus Cobra, especially with things like Fabled Passage uh, or other mana generators like Vastwood, Sur um, Vastwood Surge, Cultivate, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, yeah, and then we also have Great Henge that way. The fun thing about Great Henge, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, you get a plus one, plus one counter on it, and you draw a card. That's really just added bonus. To be honest, this actually might not make the final version of this deck. Like we may cut this before too long. Um, but at the same time, it is very powerful in green, and it's just really solid. And it's a it's a great card draw engine, and it can also gain us life to help hold on um, in if we're going up against aggro decks, potentially. Although it's awfully expensive. We do have Ancient Green Warden as well for a couple of reasons. Ancient Green Warden, it doubles down on all of our landfall triggers. So Lotus Cobra starts producing two mana. Ruin Crab mills our opponent for six instead of three. And on top of that, our Scoot Swarms, not only do are they doubling, but they're doubling at twice the rate. We're quadrupling our Scoot Swarms uh, when we have Ancient Green Warden down. So in a longer, grindier game, when we get there, there it goes. Now for the sideboard, you'll notice we don't have one yet because this is just the deck, best of one deck for the moment. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take it take it into the field and see how it handles. All right, we're doing standard ranked best of one, and we are currently at platinum. So let's go ahead and see can we well. Let's see what we can do here. All right, we got Double Ruin Crab and Uro in the opening hand. I feel like that's a keeper. So we're going to be trying for the mill strategy this time around. The other added bonus of the Ruin Crab, which is super duper fun, is a lot of times when people see the Ruin Crab, they assume we're all in on mill, and they'll do whatever they can to remove the Ruin Crab. So they'll spend all the removal on the Ruin Crab. So by the time the Scoot Swarm hits, they kind of go, wait a minute, what? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, and it's just a little bit too late. Ooh, Ozolith on one. That's scary. Like, that's genuinely scary. Um, and here I almost... I, okay, public service announcement. If anyone out there is similar to me and you're in the habit of playing your lands first, knock that off. Um, that is actually an issue that I struggle with. 
And uh, well, you know, you normally would attack with the crab to assert dominance, but that's a that's a jerk move. I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah, don't play your lands before before you play your spells. If you have spells uh, that you can play or that you are going to play in a turn before your land drops, especially if those spells are landfall creatures such as Ruin Crab. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and throw down a forest. Ruin Crabs are going to trigger and trigger. Because now we have the three mana to cast our Uro with two Ruin Crabs down. This is nasty. This is really nasty. Like, I kind of feel bad. Yeah, this is just rude what we're doing here. Yeah, we've already milled our opponent by 18. Yeah. I'm sorry, dude. Except I'm not really, and we're going to keep going. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry, for sure, on this one. But that's okay. All right, opponent, what do you got? Come on, what you got? I believe in you, opponent. You can do this. So we've got that Ancient Green Warden, which is going to be handy for later on. Unfortunately, ooh, Shovel, very nice. Death Touchers are good. Now, the one thing that we don't have here... Well, we don't have our Scoot Swarm, obviously, which is definitely something we want. We also don't have a way to really fill our graveyard. Um, I also would love a Fabled Passage. Fabled Passage here with the Ancient Green Warden is disgusting, and I want it in my life. But unfortunately, we don't have it. Um, yeah, so Shovel's usually pretty darn good, but they need to have some targeted removal. Otherwise, it's not going to work, because I'm not blocking anything with my Ruined Crabs. They can attack into it all day, and I'm just going to let them on by, because I do not want to step into a combat trick. I really do not want to step into a combat trick, nor do I want the, uh, the Death Touch on Shovel to come home. That would be awful for us. Alright, so here we're going to go ahead and throw green which gives us just enough for our ancient green warden so the time has come for said ancient green warden to come on out our opponent's down to 19 cards in library that's pretty darn good and the ancient green warden is also a 5-7 with reach so that is powerful so at the very least that stone coil serpent's not going to be attacking anytime soon i also noticed that our opponent is stuck on three lands which you know i kind of feel bad about but at the same time like we're ramping just because that's what we do. Um, this is also going to give us access to the Great Henge next turn, which is kind of fun. Okay. Description of Abundance. Ooh, very nice. Okay. So Shovel fought the Ancient Green Warden, which is a perfectly fine way to get that off of the battlefield, which is very good because I do have another land in play, or land in my hand, rather, that was going to be coming into play next turn, and that would be rough for our opponent. All right. And with that, you know, I, I kind of wish we could point one of these mills at ourself uh, because I really want to cast Uro. I want, I want Uro back on the battlefield because that would also give us access to our Great Henge, which would, be, which would be nice. Draws cards, hit extra land drops. It would be super duper useful. But unfortunately, we only have two cards in our graveyard. Now, the Rune Crabs are good enough. I'm certainly not about to step one of the Rune Crabs in front of Garrick's Harbinger. That would be a terrible idea. So instead. They can go ahead and draw an extra card, which actually is just going to make the mill plan a little bit easier. So here we have not executed on the Scoot Swarm plan that this deck is really built around, but we've uh, we've accomplished quite a bit here. Oh no! Dang. Well, fortunately, because because Shovel's gone, the the bounty counter does not uh, didn't come into effect, which is good. Bummer, yo. Bummer. Yo. All right. And so let's go ahead and cast a kicked Vastwood Surge, because I feel like it. Which is going to put two more forests onto the battlefield, which is going to mill our opponent a couple more times. They are now down to one card, which feels pretty good. Not going to lie. And we now have a 2-5 rune grab, which is just bonus. So their library is officially empty. They have this turn to kill me. They didn't get there. We did. Booyah. All right, game two. We are 1-0 so far with Scoot with the Scoot Swarm Landfall. Scoot Fall. Um, this, we do not have access to our Ruin Crab, nor do we have um, 
We don't have we didn't have a ruin crab, nor did we have Scoot Swarm. This, however, Glass Pool Mystic and a Ruin Crab in the opening hand. Yes, please. I'm gonna let the Ancient Green Warden go because we're not gonna be able to cast it right away anyway. And hello, opponent. How do you do? I'm gonna play I'm gonna cast Ruin Crab and you're gonna be mad at me and possibly quit the game because I'm another one of those jerk bags running ruin crab. Ooh, although Thorn Thornwood falls from our opponent could mean that they are also a jerk bag running ruin crab. Here's hoping. Ooh, let's see, what do we mail? Ooh, Fay of Wishes, Ketria Triumph. Nope. Alright, so they're running what looks like Teamer Adventures, is my guess. Yep. Teamer Adventures with the Clover. Alright, the race is on. The race is on, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use Glass Pool Mystic to copy Ruin Crab. Probably could have done a nice little crab slap there to assert dominance, but nah, not, no point really. Now, the Lucky Clover is concerning because a Brazen Borrower here is going to completely bounce our board, and that would really stink. Um, and they may have it. No. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and hit a Cultivate. Because that's going to put one land into the, onto the battlefield, and we haven't hit our... There it is. Dang it! I was about to say, we haven't hit our land drop, so that would, would get us two triggers with two crabs down. Alas. It's not to be. Alas. It is not to be. That's all right. We're going to go ahead and reset one of our, one of our crabs. Which not the greatest situation to be in, but I've I've been in worse. Yeah, actually, this deck that we're going up against, the Teamer Adventures deck, is very good. This is a this is a top tier, um, yeah, this is a tier one meta deck for sure. So, if if Scootfall can uh, can put up a fight, great. If it can't, that's fine too. Um, ooh, Storm's Wrath in hand, that's problematic. I don't love seeing that. And Edgewall Innkeeper is just nothing but value. It's just raw value all day, every day. Um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and throw, I'm going to throw the Mystic, copying the, copying the Crab, then throw down another Mystic as a land so that I can get at least a little bit of mill going. It's not as much as I would want, but I'm going to force them to use that Storm's Wrath. If, you know, they've grabbed it, now is the time. If they want to use it, they're going to get rid of their Edge Walling Keeper. Yep. Okay. Not ideal. But uh, ultimately, that's exactly what we were talking about, how the goal of this deck is not necessarily to mill out with the Ruin Crab. The Ruin Crab is a nice plan B. At the end of the day, the Scoot Swarm is really what we're trying for. The fact that we haven't hit any yet is getting obnoxious, not going to lie. And right now, I'm just Uroing so I can draw into some draw some cards. Um, Lotus Cobra, I love you. I'm glad you're here. You're not what I was hoping for, not going to lie. Yeah, I love you, buddy, but... Uh, Escape to the Wilds, that's just all the cards. Just drawing all the cards. Ooh, and they hit a, a whole mess of land off that Escape to the Wilds. That actually is excellent for them. Yep. Now, I mean, that said, actually, I want to point out that while the Teamer Clover deck is a top-tier meta deck, they are running Swiftwater Cliffs and Thornwood Falls. So it's not... It isn't striking me as the most, uh, the fanciest mana base that they could have, for sure. But, still good. Uh, I'll turn that into a green. So I can mutate here. I'm feeling like mutating here. Then that's going to bring that onto the battlefield. doesn't really matter. Um... We could have the Vastwood Surge here, but I'd rather wait until we have one of our real payoffs down. Instead of just mana um yeah but now we have a migratory great horn cobra which is not bad now if they have a bone crusher giant that's a kill spell on it but it forced them to use well actually wait a minute had they just used the bone had they used bone crusher giant and had to target a if, if they double targeted actually no never mind talking ahead of myself if they had double targeted the lotus cobra they would have lost their bone crusher giant but in all likelihood they would have just aimed at my face with one of them so uh let's not escape our other uro just in case they hit some kind of exile effect which i can't imagine what that would be but all the same i don't want to see it so we have six down we don't have enough to cast a a kicked Vastwood Surge, unfortunately, because um, that'd be nice. 
And I could have held on to that land, actually, just to make sure we hit our landfall triggers once we actually finally get a Scoot Swarm down. But we have Vastwood Surge. Vastwood Surge is going to do just fine. So hopefully we top deck into a Scoot here soon, because uh, otherwise we are 12 kinds of dead. I'm going to go ahead and take that hit from that Beanstalk Giant. That does not feel good at all, but I'm going to definitely be attacking with Uro next turn. If nothing else, just to draw the card. We just need to draw one more card, because... I am noticing that our opponent is down to just one card in hand, which is intriguing. Come on, Scoot. Show me Scoot. Yay, Scoot. I'm going to go ahead and decline that because we haven't hit our land drop yet this turn, and I want Scoot to be in play before we do. Cool. I'm all right with that trade, actually. Nifty little quasi two for one. I'm not mad at that. The swarm. It's here, ladies and gentlemen. The swarm is upon us. And we're going to go ahead and cast a kick Vastwood Surge. Here we go. Two lands hit the battlefield. Copies and copies with copies of copies. All right, cool. Would have been better if we had gotten at least one more one more turn on that, but you know what? We got something. We've got a board now. And we've got chump lockers for that Beanstalk Giant for days, which is lovely. All right, so the scoot is loose. Let's go. They're going to go grab a board wipe, though, and it's going to make us sad. Do they have a flame sweep in the in the bin, perhaps? No, they have a second Storm's Wrath. Nice. Yeah, that's going to wreck all of our plans. <laughs> and a new Spirit Dragon. That's, uh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty plan-wrecking as well. All right. All right. Not ideal. Another Vastwood Surge off the top here would be fantastic. Well, you're not a Vastwood Surge, but you're something. Ching, 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 ching. And I might as well swing with everything because they're all going to die next turn anyway. All right. Yeah, and they're just going to sink all their mana into Midnight Clock so that they can uh, wheel here pretty soon. Yep. And Beanstalk Giant survives, of course, because it's freaking huge. Ooh, and they had the mana to Ugin on top of it. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah, we're 12 kinds of dead here. But again, we put up a decent fight against one of the best decks in the meta right now. So I'm not mad at this. I'm not mad at it. Gonna flash the GG because they are just an Ugin tick away and they get all the cards from Midnight Clock. Yeah, no, that's we're we're way dead here. But it was a good game. It was a good game. Actually, that's the thing. I, I'm grateful for good games. Even if I end up losing them, it's a good back and forth. We got close. They had answers. I'm not mad. Fae of Wishes is a really good card, you guys. I don't know if you knew that. Hot take. It's a good card. All right. Game number three. We are one and one. So this is the tiebreaker, as it were. Let's see. Um, we got the Scoot in the opening hand along with Glasspool Mystic. That actually seems really nice. And all the lands, plus even a Fabled Passage. Ooh. So, on turn four, we're definitely hitting the Fabled Passage. That's, that's the plan. Um, yeah, the Scoot Swarm, we got some Scoot Swarm action. This is gonna work, I think. I think. I hope. We'll see. Lotus Cobra, beautiful. Beautiful. That was about one of the best top decks we could have had. Lotus Cobra followed by a land. I mean... Everything is uh, everything's coming up for us this turn. Oh, uh, Nighthawk Scavenger. That doesn't suck. All right, so if we hit... So would it make sense? I'm going to throw the Fabled Passage. Let's go ahead and turn that into a blue. I'm then going to use our Glasspool Mystic. So instead of copying the Scoot Swarm, which is what I had originally envisioned, I'm going to instead copy our Lotus Cobra. Doesn't give us much this turn, but next turn, things are going to get nutty. Yeah, because we don't have a fourth land, the Fabled Passage wasn't going to... The land that we fetch from the Fabled Passage isn't going to come into play untapped, and so it would only give us access to two mana, which doesn't give us access to play anything, unfortunately. But that's okay. All right. One damage, Nighthawk Scavenger, do your thing. You do you, as they say. I believe that's uh, something the kids are saying these days. Um, all right. Fabled Passage actually was not the right land to cast next, last turn. I should have, uh... Yeah, I should have thrown a basic. 
That way we could have cast the Scoot Swarm and then got the Landfall Trigger. We're still going to get this Landfall Trigger, which is better than nothing. But it could have been better than better than nothing. All right. One more green. One more green. This Cultivate is going to be basically free. One of those is going to go on the battlefield. Now we just have a fistful of lands, which... Uh, and that's mana we can't use. All right. So now I'm questioning whether or not duplicating the... Uh, <laughs> I'm questioning whether or not duplicating the Lotus Cobra was the right move. Probably should have saved it and duplicated the Scoot Swarm. Although we were able to hit the Scoot and the Cultivate this turn specifically because we we uh, duplicated the Lotus Cobra. And now they just fed us an Uro. Especially thanks to Thieves Guild Enforcer. I'm actually not super mad at that. You know, drawing that would have been better. Oh, yeah, you're going to blast my Lotus Cobra? You, you got it. The Scoot Swarm was the correct answer there. But, hey, I'm not, <laughs> not going to correct them. Um, all right, so how many lands we got down now? I think we got enough. That's going to become a blue. This is going to become an island. And that means we're going to get an Uro in play. So we've got an Uro coming. Excellent, excellent. You'll love to see it. And that's going to give us another land drop. So that's going to trigger our Lotus Cobra, not to mention all of our Scoots. Scoot, 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 Scoot. Love all the Scoots, plus another Cultivate. Let's get some more Scoots. And I could be grabbing Islands, but at this point, it doesn't matter all that much. Just Scoots, followed by Scoots, with a side of Scoots. And we don't have a good attack yet, but next turn we're going to have a tasty one. So if we get a Vastwood Surge off the top, I'm going to do a Happy Dance. Um, that actually would be truly fantastic because it's an overrun effect that would allow all of our guys to just explode in glorious effect. Um, I'm not counting on it per se, but it'd be sweet because I think that would mean lethal. Yeah, and we have an Uro in the mix too, so that's going to be two land drops next turn regardless. So, yeah, I do have to thank them for feeding us that Uro with the, with the rogue, with the rogue mill action. And they had, and Soaring Thought Thief has Flash. They could have waited on that, but they chose not to. So they're going to drown and lock the original Scoot Swarm, but it really doesn't matter because we have 15 more of them. So we're going to be just fine. Um, I don't know if they don't know how Scoot Swarm works or if they thought that, that would be better than it actually is. I don't know. But in the end, that doesn't really, doesn't really do much for him. Um, all right. Actually, the Nighthawk Scavenger is doing some work here. Here we go. Now we get to see Arena kind of chug a little bit. We had 32 triggers on the stack. All right, Scoots. I believe in you, Scoots Warm. Let's go. And I might as well swing with everything because I feel like it. All right, let's go ahead and put another island on the field. I couldn't help but notice that it kind of like slowed down as it came down. All right, so we've got 92 triggers on the stack. Scoot Swarm! Scoot Swarm! It's happening! Yes! You love to see it. And it'll make a white and a black, because why not? The mana doesn't matter. So we still we still lose this game because they have lethal in the air, and we don't have lethal yet on the ground, because um, their life total is at 39 because of those Nighthawk Scavengers. We still lose this game, but that was sweet. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> so actually our uh, our other option is to throw cultivate and see if we can force a draw by by forcing the machine to shut down like if we can just get the whole server to crash then it counts as a draw so that is our the closest thing we can get to a win is just force a force a draw by uh by breaking arena well you know what let's go for it let's see if we can do it Here we go. Slow chugging along. Chugga, 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 chugga. Let's see. Show me triggers. Yeah, Scoot Swarm is bonkers, you guys. This card is way too good. I think if Scoot Swarm just created the insects and it never created a copy of itself, it would be a completely different story. But since it does create copies of itself, get out of here. All right, so we've got... Over 200 triggers so far. They're still calculating. We have 270 Scoot Swarm triggers. Yeah, this is definitely stress testing the arena server. 
And uh, so far, actually, you know what? It's handling this okay. So this was 270 triggers, and it's actually chugging through them pretty fast. I'm impressed. I'm genuinely impressed, actually. This is uh, this is the cleanest I've seen it handle this in a while. Um, I've I've seen it, I've seen it get bogged down with far worse. So yeah. All right, so there we go. So we we got through that. We have over 400 scoot swarms on the battlefield. Meanwhile, our opponent has 10 damage in the air. <gasps> Wait a minute. Our ancient green warden has reach. I ah man, the GG was premature. I thought we were dead, but I just realized we have a reacher on the field. My bad. <laughs> I'd completely blanked on that. All right, and our opponent just uh our opponent's taking their time. I think they're trying to find a way to deal with the ancient greed warden, or they've accepted that they've just lost, and uh, they're roping us out. Either way, I'm not mad at this. So, because of the ancient greed warden having reach, they'll able if they swing with both scavengers, one of them will get through. The other one is going to get blocked. Or maybe when all that res was resolving, they got up and got a sandwich. Um, you know that'd be understandable. So the ancient greed warden is going to die, which Meh, mild bummer. Not the end of the world. And if they have any kind of pump spell for their Nighthawk Scavenger, then we'll be in rough shape. Uh, if they don't, we win. Because we get to attack out with Scoots. There's nothing wrong with attacking out with Scoots. I do love me a good Scoots Swarm. Man, this combo... Well, I mean combo. It's a single card. Um, it's a single card with Landfall Enablers. Like, it's... It's insane. It feels like it should be some kind of game-breaking combo, but it's not. It's just one card and an attack all button that results in some GGs. All right, so that was Scoot Swarm. Went two and one with it. I'm pretty happy with that. Scoot Fall. Sorry, my bad. I need to remember my stupid portmanteaus that I use for my deck names. Yeah, so Scoot Fall. Silly deck. A lot of fun. So thanks you so much for coming out and checking it out. I appreciate you. Go ahead and... Go ahead and uh, like and subscribe uh, down below. I appreciate that. And uh, I'll be sure to catch you next time. You can also catch me live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash hamhocks42. Thanks so much, and have a good one. Oh, and don't forget, you're a good person, and you deserve to be happy.